this video, I will be showing you how to reduce the travel in the Mazoki Z1 coil fork. So, part 5 of the Beefy Max build. This is my Z1 coil. As standard, when I bought it, it came at 170 millimeters of travel. What I need to do is swap some spacers around in the coil side uh, to reduce it down to 150. The Beefy is designed to run 160 to 140, so running just said one coil at 150 would be perfectly optimal for this frame. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp the fork in a work stand. It makes the fork easy to work on, plus it makes it easy to put a bucket or a bowl beneath to catch any oil dribbling out the fork. Starting at the bottom of the fork, the first thing we're going to need to do is remove this cover from the rebound knob. Next, we need to remove the rebound knob from the fork. It is attached by a small 2mm grub screw. We need to undo this and that allows the rebound knob to be removed from the fork. Placing their bucket, bowl or drip tray under the fork is advisable because we're going to be leaking some oil very soon. Using a 15mm socket we can remove the foot nut that holds the damper side of the fork in place. I like to collect all these parts in this park tray so not to lose them. Next, using a 10mm socket, we can remove the foot nut from the spring side of the fork. The crush washer came loose from the foot nut when I was undoing this. Grab that and store it somewhere safe. If it's in good condition, it can be reused. Bit of a hack next, we need to tap the lowers away from the uppers. So instead of tapping directly on the through rod, we can use a very small socket to reach around onto the threaded bit and tap the damper rod up into the fork. And as you can see, oil went everywhere, so make sure you have that drip tray handy and some paper towel and rag to mop up any spillages. The spring side isn't so vulnerable, so you can just tap it if you have a very soft mallet to release the lower legs from the upper legs. The lower legs are now free from the upper legs, so you can just pull them off. And I like to place them in the bowl at this point in time, so let them drip out completely and not cause a massive mess. I then use some towel to wipe down the fork to make them easier to work on and make sure you know, there's no oil or damage anywhere. Next we need to remove the coil spring from the fork. There's a proper fox tool to do this which is a flat edge socket but I don't own one. You can use an adjustable spanner like me. I wouldn't recommend it but if you're very careful you can get away with it. You ha it's very slow and tedious though. Once the top cap preload adjuster is loose, we have access to the spring. And straight away you can see two of the spacers that we need to adjust the position of. At this stage you can remove the spring from the top of the fork if you want. I didn't, I left it in and removed it from the bottom. It doesn't make any difference really. Next, I tilted the fork to a horizontal position in the work stand to get easy access to this retaining ring at the base of the spring stanchion. Using a small flat blade screwdriver or a pick, you can remove this retaining ring. Be patient, it's a bit of a fiddly job, but you'll get there eventually. It sits in a little groove, you just gotta pry up the very edge of it and work it round the perimeter.
Once the retaining ring is removed, a quick pull on the rod removes the spring assembly from the stanchion tube. Make sure you have some rag around you at this point in time as it's very greasy and oily and you don't want it falling over everything. Let's have a look at all the spring components and work out how we got to reorientate them to reduce the travel of this fork from 170 down to 150. We have the spring. The spring shaft with the bottom out bumper. This lives at the bottom of the spring. We have this little tiny washer on top of the spring. Careful not to lose that. We then have these two plastic isolators that surround the spring to stop it rattling around against the fork stanchion. And finally, we have the travel adjustment spacers. When the fork is set at 170 millimeters, these both need to live at the top of the spring. But I want 150 millimeters of travel from this fork, so they need to live between the bottom out bumper and the top out spring. They clip onto the shaft nice and securely. If you wanted 160mm to travel, you'd put one at the top and one at the bottom. With the travel adjustments made, it's time to grease up the assembly and reassemble the fork. I use this Sendek grease. I've had it ages. You buy one of these little pops. There's suspension grease and they last you for years. So liberally apply it absolutely everywhere. With the lower spring assembly thoroughly lubed up, we can insert it gently into the uh, spring stanchion and slide it into position. Next, we need to insert this retaining ring. This is a fiddly little job. It takes a bit of time. Put one end in at the start, and kind of flex it around, and it'll work itself in eventually. So it's one of those fiddly little jobs that if you've not done before, takes a bit of a wiggly technique. Once it's in, grab the spring rod hard and pull it against the retaining ring just to make sure it's not going to pull itself out of place when you have the fork reassembled. Smear a bit more grease around the spring. This will help keep it quiet in the fork and make sure it doesn't scratch or damage anything. Once it's thoroughly lubed up, you can reinsert the spring into the uppers, paying attention to the orientation, making sure that little spring washer is at the very top of the spring. Once inserted, you can add the spring isolators which sit on top of the spring. Once this is all in position, add 5 cc's of 20 weight oil into the spring side compartment. The last part of the spring assembly we need to add is the preload adjuster. Uh, so make sure it's all wound to negative. Screw it in by hand very carefully, making sure you're not cross threading. Get as far down as possible by hand. Then if you've got the socket, use the socket, it's much easier. I don't. So again, I'm going to be getting my adjustable spanner out and taking an age, screwing this back down. Next reorientate the upper leg assembly in the work stand so the crown end is lower than the 
fork lower end. This will aid uh, lubing up the lowers in a second as the oil won't flow up. Reinsert the lower legs, making sure the seals aren't pinched around the stanchions. But make sure the fork legs aren't fully slid down as we need to squirt a little bit of oil into the lower legs to lubricate them. To lube the lower legs we need to inject 10 cc of 20 weight oil into the spring side. And on the damper side we need to inject 40 cc of 5 weight oil. To inject 40 cc, this is two nearly full syringes for me. With the lower legs full of oil, wipe away any excess that might have uh, leaked out of touch from the syringe, and we're good to move to the next step, which is to fully sit down the fork and make sure the threads are exposed so we can secure the lower legs to the upper legs. Use a clean towel or cloth to remove any excess oil that's on the threads. We don't want these to be oily as it effectively increases the torque the bolt has on the lower leg of the fork. So we want them to be pretty much normal and dry. Starting with the spring side, I install the foot nut and crush rusher and torque it down to 5.7 Nm using a 10 mm socket. Moving on to the damper side, repeat the process, install the foot nuts and the crush washer, but this time torque to 16.9 newton meters. With the foot nuts fully home and torque down, we can reinstall the damper adjuster. This uses a 2 mil hex key. Uh, just don't do it very super tight, it doesn't need it, it just needs to be locked down against the flat of the adjuster on the damper rod. And with that fully installed, we can install the rebound knob cover to make sure it's nice and protected, it won't fall off and disappear. Wipe down the fork, make sure there's no excess oil floating around it to you know, trap dirt and make it look ugly. And we're pretty much done. So that's how you adjust the travel on a Mizaki Z1 coil, it's relatively easy. If you can't find the exact fork you want to buy straight from the factory or the retailer or online, you can dive into the fork, edit around the spaces and change it from 150 to 170 or 170 to 150 or to 160 or any of the variations you want, relatively easy. The only excess you really need to buy is a a 20 weight and 5 weight oil if you have the tools. So this is ready to go and get installed in that which will be the next part of Project Fifi. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Cheers!